Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, it's Kasim and John with Solutions 8, coming to you with some more Google Ads ninjiness uh, and introducing the Chief Ninja, John. Hello, I'm Chief Ninja John. I like that name. A lot better than Dr. Ads. <laughs> it's better than Dr. Ads. You know what's funny? We're going to call our YouTube channel um, Work in Progress. That's just what it's going to be called. Let's hear the name. Actually do that. <laughs> awesome. Progress. Yep. So today, we're going to be talking a little bit about remarketing. Uh, but with a little bit of an added twist. So a lot of clients that we work with like remarketing, um, but they also have just a simple basic understanding of remarketing. And I'm gonna show you today, not really necessarily an advanced technique, but just a different strategy in terms of remarketing. And what this is going to do is kind of open up the possibilities that remarketing can, can be used for. Um, e-commerce, lead generation, uh, brand recognition, specific type of uh, you know, remarketing events for a specific type of action that someone took one time, um, anything that we want to have that is really specific uh, to, to our marketing, you, you can do that with remarketing. And what I mean by that is most people believe that remarketing is just, okay, they went to my website and then we're going to show them ads to try to get them back to the site. While that is true, the way you could do that there's many different ways that you can you can control who gets what ad after they take what action and when and what they see. So getting hyper specific about remarketing can really be um, kind of make or break of any sort of campaign. And I'm going to share my screen so I'll show you what I mean. So, all right, this one again, obviously name is blurred for um, privacy, and this is a campaign that we just started uh, not too long ago. The campaign is called Remarketing, and we have uh, three different uh, ad groups, all visitors, OPEX savings, upgrade and maintenance. And in these, you can see that the OPEX savings and uh, just started here on April 16th. So we're just starting to populate the audience here. And the reason why this is such little traffic so far, you know, one click here and 20 impressions is because this is something that we have just started to a brand new audience and the audiences need time to kind of build up in size. And let me show you how this works. So we have in our one remarketing campaign, we have three different ad groups and each ad group is about a specific topic that is on our client site. One topic is about operational uh, savings and the other one is about the upgrade in their maintenance. Now we have an audience for each one of these. And the cool part about these audiences are, if I pop into one here, Nope, oh, that was not supposed to go there. Hold on one moment. Experiencing some technical difficulties. Please hold. There we go. All right, audiences. Now, inside of this audience, what we did is we took the audience members of OPEX Savings and we said, anybody who visits a very specific part of our site, and for this, we chose a blog, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we have 12 blogs on our site that are talking about OPEX savings. And if someone visits one of these blogs, I want to show them a ad about how they can achieve savings in their operational uh, costs of whatever that they're doing in their industry. And I can't really give you that industry right now because it is, it is private. But what this is about is if someone is Googling something, how to save my operational expense doing X. And they click on the blog and they read and they say, oh, that's really interesting. You know, I'm glad I found that out. And then they leave. Now they're gonna get a operational savings blog to uh, add to them to bring them back to a page to request a quote. And what's nice about this is we can, we can pick and choose exactly what visitors receive this, this message if they go to a specific blog or if they've been to a blog more than twice or if they stayed on our website for longer than five minutes on at least three of these blogs. There's ways that you can customize and ways you can actually match if they take these three actions or if they stay this long or if they do this more than twice, then start to show them ads. And the cool part about this is you can see here at the bottom of it, uh, it says 140 to 480 people. So it's not that this isn't going to be running at high level. It's currently building up all of that organic traffic to then be remarketed to in a very specific way uh, on Google ads. And then we get to see, you know, what is the click through rates, average cost per click, the cost. We've only spent, you know, forty nine dollars total since we started this, so it's starting to ramp up uh, and get more and more more users. But again, upgraded maintenance. We have one hundred ninety to six hundred ten matched users, about 
the people who are interested in upgrading their maintenance, so they should see an upgrade in maintenance ad and how to get a free price quote about how they can um, upgrade their maintenance plan for this specific industry. And the way that you would control this is go into tools and settings, go into audience manager, click on this blue plus symbol here, and you can say a remarketing audience of website visitors. And for this website visitor, give it an audience name. So this can even just say like contact us, for example. Visitors of a page, okay? You can even say visitors who visited one page and then another, or visited a page and did not. So maybe you saw my homepage, but not a pricing page. Visitors of a page during specific dates. Maybe you're running a promotion at a certain time. Visitors of a page with specific tags. If you have any sort of tags, of, if you're tagging the user from a specific campaign, you can only remark it to those specific users. So what's nice about this is we just say visitors of a page to keep it simple and it contains forward slash contacts dash us. And then you can pre-fill with a list of people who match the rules within the past 30 days. Now, obviously you'll see your audience doesn't have members because this isn't a real page on their site, but I'm using this as an example. But the cool part about this is you can either start with an empty list or say, hey, go back in time the last 30 days of people who that have actually been to this page and just grab those people. So you don't have to wait for it to start to populate unless it's a new, um, new page like a blog. But you can actually backdate it and say anybody that's been there the last 30 days, start marketing them today. And then you can actually choose the membership duration. So how often do they, how long do they stay into this, um, uh, stay in this list? And you can actually go up to 540 days, and which means that if anybody visited the contact us page, you know, they'll stay in that list for 540 days and then expire. And then you can give yourself a little description if you want to remind yourself what this is. You know, people that visit my contact page, you know, whatever it may be. Um, but that's how you create one of these remarketing audiences. And then you can use that to put a specific ad, a specific call to action, drive into a specific page. So you can say, if they come to my site and do anything here, I want to show them this sort of ad and that's how you do that through here. So it's just kind of thinking about now you'll, you'll see the, like the light bulb has gone off. You're like, oh man, I can think of 10 different scenarios of how I want to make a specific message to someone and not just, you know, hey, you've been on my site, please come back. You know, you want to get really strategic. You want to get creative and congruent in your messaging. Uh, and this is the way to do that. I love this. I think, you know, the, the note that you just made might be the most important for people that have content rich sites. It makes sense to invest the time in segmenting your site, splitting it up by, you know, service offering product, whatever, and then building campaigns around those specific interests because generic marketing campaigns, there's nothing wrong with them. But if you can talk to somebody on the terms that they expressed interest with, like that's huge. It's changing the narrative, right? It's no yeah. longer about you. It's about them. If my website was called, you know, socks.com and you came to my website and you left, I say, Hey, we're socks.com. Like, yeah, you are. But if you left it said, and, but if you came back and said, Hey, we actually have a 10% off, um, you know, coupon code for the red pair of socks that you were looking at. And you looked at it at least three times. Now we're going to say that in the ad copy, but those red socks keep looking at, we got 10% off. If you want to come back and buy now it's about them. You're giving them something as a discount. Um, completely changes the whole narrative. You want to, you know, they're the ones on the internet. They don't care about you. Um, they don't care about what your company, your name is or your logo. They, they are looking for something and they'll find it. It's just that they choose you or not. I feel like that should be our slogan. <laughs> yeah. Looking for something and they'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> they'll find it. Even if it's not you solutions, eight. <laughs> yeah. So tell me why, because I, you know, you can build uh, audiences and analytics, you build audiences and ads. Mm -hmm. What is there a difference? Why build audiences and ads instead of analytics? I like audiences and ads um, specifically because you can actually inside of Google ads say that they have come from an AdWords uh, or sorry, AdWords, an ads campaign. And what I mean by that is analytics will say all traffic to the blog, which is really, really good. Um, but when you build it inside of Google ads, you can actually differentiate between, do you want to have the visitor, um, come from all channels or do you want it only specific to Google ads? And the cool part about that is too, is if you're running a specific promotion campaign in Google ads, you can take what you've said on that specific campaign and remarket to it in that same way, shape and form. So if you used to say 15% of night, say now 20, or if you were to say, you know, increase your your efficiency. Now you can say, now you can, you know, maximize your blah, blah, blah. It, you can keep the same theme of the promotion that you're running that you know people saw, or you people clicked on that ad and went to the website and didn't, and didn't go through. So it's a way for you to control what did they first see when they got there and, um, and speak to that narrative because you'll run different promotions anyway in your organic traffic. Um, and this way you can have further control over it. So I, I like to go through 
uh, Google Ads. Also, it uses Google Tag Manager, which in my opinion is just a much better matching experience than, than what analytics can do. Um, Google Ads sees kind of the full journey. Analytics will, but they'll they'll usually count just the last click. So attribution models get a little bit more um, get a little more detailed. And I think it probably wouldn't be enough for this call. Uh, but using inside Google Ads just affords you some more creative control. Got it. That's helpful. This is great, man. I appreciate it. If you're watching and you have questions, drop them in the comments. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, appreciate y'all, you know, keeping us doing what we're doing. We wouldn't do this if you didn't watch. So thank you. Yeah. And awesome. See you next time. Thanks, everyone.